the topic of my presentation is hunger and how, how hunger governs uh, integrative physiology and how hunger is governed from the hypothalamus from very specific subset of neurons. The basic message is that uh, hunger is a fundamental drive to live and if you eliminate hunger then you probably not benefit in the long run from that. Uh, also the message is that uh, the relationship between the brain and the rest of the body is fundamentally important not only to control your body but also how you control your brain functions. So the notion that the brain is in isolation and you make decisions about your life independent of the rest of your body is, is an illusion. I think one of the key notion is that if, if you affect eight issues, so you think you're going to be interfering with the liver or the muscle or the fat specifically, some people might think that then your overall effect will be limited to those tissues. But that's not the case because anytime you interfere with any tissue, eventually it's going to come to your brain as well. So you're going to be affecting behaviors that you are not really intending to affect. It is all part of that. However, I tell you, from a perspective of basic science, these notions of good food, bad food, what, what they really mean, I, I really don't understand what it means. And I think those kind of ideas constantly changing. So one day you think that meat eating is bad for you, then the next week you read a newspaper that actually it's good for you. I think it is important to really look at the individual. I think it's very difficult to use epidemiological knowledge to treat the individual who's sitting in your office and asking what they should do with their own lives. And I think what I heard today in the session is that the amount of time uh, physicians spend with uh, diabetes patients is very limited. And through those windows, there's very limited understanding you can gain from that individual. And I think learning more about that given individual is gonna be probably the key how you can address uh, these this issues more effectively. Then the alternative, I think, which is an important one, of course, is education of the patients, the education of the people, and, and how they can themselves eventually adjust uh, their way of being or their way of living so that they themselves benefit from that. The intent is to, again, with this notion that the various parts of the body are communicating with one another and that communication is very important for, for successful survival, we are trying to understand more about how the various tissues interact with each other and also to bring it to the level of uh, psychiatric conditions. We think that when you deal with issues such as Alzheimer's disease or depression or schizophrenia, it's very much underappreciated how much potential the peripheral tissues might contribute to the, either the emergence or the propagation of those disorders. So we would like to go in that direction as well.